Using a full range of motion might be harming your muscle growth. Here's what to do instead. We back, coming at you, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're talking about range of motion, which, as it just so happens to be, is actually the topic of my PhD. In our meta-analysis, we looked at three studies comparing a full range of motion to using lengthened partials, or doing partial reps in the lengthened or stretched position of an exercise. The three studies that were included in this analysis at the time were a study by Pedrosa and colleagues, a study by Workhausen and colleagues, and finally, a study by Goto and colleagues. What did we find? Well, using a full range of motion actually resulted in less growth than using lengthened partials by about five to 10%. Now, since then, there have been more studies. Specifically, there's been two more studies. One has been published, and that's a study in the calves by Cassiano and colleagues, and one has not yet been published, and that's a study by Mayo and colleagues. In the study by Cassiano and colleagues, they compared doing full range of motion calf raises, about 50 degrees of plantar flexion, to doing lengthened partials, or doing the bottom half, or bottom 25 degrees of plantar flexion, to doing shortened partials, or the top half of the rep. They measured calf growth at two different sites. What did they find? Well, at one site, both full range of motion and lengthened partials did significantly better for hypertrophy than shortened partials, but at the second site, lengthened partials actually outperformed both a full range of motion and also shortened partials. So once again, this study broadly lends credibility to the idea that actually doing lengthened partials could increase your growth to a greater extent versus just doing full range of motion. The second study, as I mentioned earlier, is one by my own colleagues. And I want you to take this one with a bit of a grain of salt. The reason for that is it has not yet been published. Does that mean the findings are invalid? No, but it's worth keeping in mind that it's not been published yet, and therefore you might wanna wait until it's been published to take these findings as being rock solid. In this study by Mayo and colleagues, they compared doing a full range of motion to doing length and partials on the multi-hip machine. In the full range of motion condition, they went through about 90 degrees of hip extension, whereas in the length and partial condition, they went through half reps from the full range of motion of hip flexion to about halfway through hip extension. So just getting the 45 degrees that are most lengthened of that hip extension movement. So by doing these partial reps, they were able to, on average, train the hamstrings, glutes, and adductors at lower muscle lengths compared to in the full range of motion condition. What did they find? Well, the group performing the multi-hip exercise with lengthened partials grew the glutes more and grew some of the hamstrings more compared to just doing a full range of motion on the multi-hip. So again, when you combine these five studies, you do see that overall, actually, doing lengthened partials seems like a pretty promising strategy to increase your muscle growth relative to full range of motion. And yeah, doing full range of motion might actually be hurting your muscle growth. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, we only have five studies. Isn't it a bit too early to jump to conclusions? And part of me agrees with you. However, a bigger part of me disagrees with you. And here's why. We have plenty of data in other fields of study, like for example, comparing shortened partials or doing partial repetitions in the shortened position to doing lengthened partials. Again, partial repetitions in that stretch position of an exercise. And very consistently, for example, in this body of evidence, you do see that lengthened partials are better for growth compared to shortened partials. The same applies to the isometric training literature where doing lengthened isometric contractions almost always results in more growth than doing shortened isometric contractions. So the general principle across a variety of bodies of evidence that lengthened training is better than shortened training for muscle growth is super consistent. So even though we only have four published studies comparing lengthened partials to a full range of motion and one unpublished study, I still think the results are very consistent within this body of evidence. And overall, it's worth definitely paying attention to. In fact, when you combine all of these bodies of evidence, we have something around 20 studies, which is a pretty compelling amount of evidence. Now, why do lengthened partials result in more muscle growth than a full range of motion? It is not super clear yet. Some people might be very quick to say, it is definitely due to an increase in fascicle length by our, for example, sarcomerogenesis. The reality is we just don't fully know yet. What we do know is that we typically see increases in muscle hypertrophy and muscle thickness, more so at more distal areas of a muscle group. That could be related to differences in activation, where, for example, more lengthened work could recruit more distal areas of a muscle more. It could be related to passive tension, where the more you lengthen a muscle fiber, the greater the amount of passive tension it will experience as passive elements like Titan and other elements get more lengthened. So one thing that seems pretty clear is that the increase in hypertrophy is likely mediated 
by a difference in average muscle length being trained. So length and partials don't grow more muscle just because you're doing partials versus a full range of motion. And for example, being able to use more weight. Rather, it seems that length and partials allow you to grow more muscle because they on average train your muscles at longer muscle lengths compared to a full range of motion. As a final note on the possibility of fascicle length changes, I would be a bit skeptical of this. A lot of the rationale around length and training being mostly beneficial as a result of increases in fascicle length, those rationales mostly stem from very old animal studies. Whether or not this is actually applicable to A, humans, and B, in the context of contractions lasting only a few seconds versus many of the animal studies employing stretch protocols lasting weeks and weeks is pretty unclear. So whether the findings in animals in long-term stretching actually apply to the applied practice of length and partials is a lot less clear. So before you run off and say it's fascicle length or it's sarcomerogenesis, just be aware there are likely some differences there and it's not worth jumping to conclusions just yet. Now, I'd like to talk about a couple aspects of incorporating some of this length and work. Specifically, first I want to discuss length and partials versus length and supersets. Length and supersets, which I haven't mentioned in this video yet, refer to doing length and reps or length and partials at the end of a full range of motion set. So let's say for example, every rep for the first 10 reps and you get a full range of motion. Now after the 10th rep, you're getting too fatigued and you can no longer get a full range of motion. Doing length and superset would mean continuing the set, but this time just doing half reps, roughly, in the lengthened position as a way of extending the set. There are three reasons why I would generally recommend lengthened partials over lengthened supersets. Number one, lengthened supersets can quickly result in you using a very high rep range. Let's say, for example, you pick a weight you can do for 15 or 20 reps, usually for your lengthened supersets. You do 15 reps, you get pretty close to failure. You might be able to get another five or 10 reps just doing partials in that lengthened position after those 15 reps. Now, what we do know is that once reps per set, get much above 12 or so, most people become a lot less accurate at gauging how close to failure they're training. And so, if you're going much above 12 reps by doing a lengthened superset, you might be shooting yourself in the foot as far as making sure that you're training sufficiently close to failure on each set. The second reason is that there is a minimal shift in terms of the average muscle length being trained. Let's say you're doing a set of 15 reps, and after 15 full range of motion reps, you're able to get five more length and partial repetitions. That will not shift the average muscle length being trained very substantially compared to just doing length and partials exclusively for the whole set. And so if the mechanism involved or the way that the extra hypertrophy is achieved is via changing the average muscle length being trained during the set to being longer and a length and superset doesn't shift that by as much as doing exclusively length and partials, you likely wouldn't see as much of a benefit when using a lengthened superset versus using a lengthened partial approach. The final reason why I wouldn't recommend lengthened supersets over lengthened partials is because they simply haven't been researched yet. Because they haven't been researched yet, we can't say with quite as much confidence whether or not they would be helpful in helping you grow more muscle as we can for lengthened partials. Lengthened partials have four or five studies behind them now, comparing them directly to full range of motion. Lengthened supersets, or essentially doing reps at the end of your set just in a lengthened position, we just don't have any evidence on that yet, and so we can't say for sure whether or not it's beneficial. Now, to finish off this video, let me give you a few recommendations. First, when transitioning from doing, for example, exclusively full range of motion to incorporating more and more lengthened partials, try and transition relatively gradually. If you transition all at once, you might increase your injury risk ever so slightly, and it's worth being a bit cautious with how quickly you transition. As a rule of thumb, take at least a few weeks if you're going to switch all your training from full range of motion to lengthened partials. Second recommendation, I would incorporate lengthened partials rather than lengthened supersets for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Takeaway number three, lengthened partials will likely increase your growth compared to doing a full range of motion, but it won't be a huge difference. It might be somewhere on the order of about five to 15% compared to just doing full range of motion. If you have hybrid goals, let's say for example, you have full range of motion strength goals, like you're a powerlifter, but you also want to grow muscle, you are likely better off using full range of motion for the most part. We know that strength and performance adaptations are range of motion specific. So if you want to get better at the powerlifting squat to parallel depth, you should most likely be squatting to powerlifting depth pretty much all the time or close to all the time. So if you have both hypertrophy and strength goals, but there's a bigger impact on your strength if you don't use that specific range of motion compared to 
If you use a four range of motion, it only slightly reduces the growth you see. You're probably best off mostly sticking to the range of motion that you want to get stronger or better at. Likewise, for sports goals, like let's say for example, play baseball, play basketball, you play football, you probably want to be specific as well. So mostly train through ranges of motion that are specific to your sport and the tasks that you perform within that sport. Finally, if you have any pain or if you're injured, just be cautious. There is some research looking at training at either extreme of the range of motion, either at the very lengthened end or at the very shortened end, and people who have pre-existing, for example, lower back pain, sometimes report a greater amount of pain when training in these components of the full range of motion. And actually, in these cases, you might be best off employing a middle partial, where you avoid the two extremes of the full range of motion, or either extreme if that seems to be particularly painful. Anyways, that's the video. If you like the video, please comment, like, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.